Welcome to Mrs. Carrill's Back to School Night presentation. First, I want to say that if you would like a YouTube translation, you can go ahead and pause the screen and follow the steps on your screen to get a translation. And let's dive right in. Welcome to History 6. My name is Julie Carrill. So a little bit about me. Um, this is my eighth year of teaching and my third at Glasgow. Um, before that, I was a high school teacher in Arlington County. Um, I'm also the department chair of the Individuals and Societies Department, which is another um, name or it's the IB terminology for the social studies department. And I am currently on maternity leave. I am a first time mom. Um, my son, Benjamin, was born on June 30th and he's napping right now. <laughs> and um, that's what's allowing me to do this video from my home classroom. And I will be on maternity leave until September 27th. So I will be back in just a few weeks and I'm definitely looking forward um, to meeting your son or daughter. So uh, some things about me, I love to be outside, hiking, biking, and running. Didn't do a lot of that over the past year, but looking forward to getting back into it. I love detective novels um, and I'm a total Anglophile. So Ben and I have been watching a lot of the British baking show um, on the couch while we both recover. And I'm an FCPS grad. I went to Kilmer Middle School where I was in the AAP program and um, I graduated from Madison High School before going on to UVA. So go Cavs. My beliefs uh, as a teacher are that students gain confidence, especially sixth graders, especially middle schoolers, when they're held to a high standard and taught to self-advocate. Uh, I really like to focus on those skills early on so that it serves them well as they go to seventh and eighth grade and into high school. So what does learning look like in history six? Well, I believe that students learn best, especially this year when we're back five days a week, students are back with all of their peers every day, that they're given time to work in groups with their peers, that they're given choices in how to show their learning, that they're challenged and held to high standards, and when they're given multiple opportunities to show what they know. And we'll talk a little bit later about our retake policy here at Glasgow, um, that'll come up again. So what can students expect from me in our class? Um, I expect students to participate in class and help their group, no slackers, nobody likes that. Um, this is a big change. I expect them to stay organized and keep track of their own assignments, especially now that we're switching to Schoology, students have their own computers. It is a lot easier than it used to be for students to keep track of things and for me as a teacher to keep things organized for students with some of these new technology tools. Um, I expect students to advocate for themselves. That includes um, learning how to email me using their student email accounts when they have something they'd like to talk to me about or coming to office hours, which are after schools during the academic block. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So this is a really fundamental shift for middle school students for sixth graders is going from um, the teacher kind of paving the way for them um, and making things easy for them and the parents doing the same thing when it comes to communication to the student really taking the lead. And it takes time. It'll be something that we practice all year. And um, students can expect retake opportunities. So something that we do here at Glasgow in every course is we offer retakes for summative or end of unit assessments. Um, typically we allow two weeks. Um, that is the retake period. So students can come after school and work on that. It's not something that they would do in class, but they would come after school, retake the assessment or part of the assessment, depending on how it would shake out. And um, I would regrade it and I would take the higher of the two scores. So what is your student gonna learn? Well, History 6 is also called US 1. Um, it's the first half of the US history curriculum. They'll do the second half in seventh grade. So here are some of the topics that we will learn about. They'll start with geography, but then the history units are Native American tribes, European exploration, colonial America, West African empires, the American Revolution, the new nation, which is like um, the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution and the structure of the government. Westward Expansion. Unit nine is activists and inventors. We look at women's suffrage, the abolition movement, that sort of thing. And we end with the Civil War. Some of these topics may look familiar from fourth grade when students did Virginia history. So there's usually some repetition, but knowing that that was when COVID started, um, if there are gaps, your student doesn't need to worry about it. We will, um, of course, um, go over everything as if they were not in fourth grade in Fairfax County because not every student was. So grading and assessments. 
So here at Glasgow, we're an Ivy middle years school, which means that there's a little bit of different language around assessments. We don't use the terms quiz, test, that kind of thing. We have formative assessments and those are checks for understanding throughout the learning process. So these are really meant to give feedback to students to let them know how they're doing um, before they get to the end of the unit summative assessment. Summative assessments are what would take the place of something like a quiz, a test, or a project. Usually in History 6, they are writing-based and um, their judgments about what content and skills were learned um, throughout the unit. Um, and those are can be retaken. Formatives don't get retaken. There's just too many of them. There would be no way to keep track of it. But summative assessments um, can be retaken in, within a two-week period of when they are returned. Um, other feedback. Um, last year, we noticed that we started off um, with homework assignments, and we ended up as a team deciding to curtail that. So your student will not expect to have homework assignments unless they don't finish something in class. So how can they start to stealth advocate for themselves, seek out help? Um, I will be running after school office hours on Wednesdays during the academic after school block from 225 to 325. That will start on September, the week of September 27th when I get back from maternity leave. Um, you can familiarize yourself with our policies in more depth by looking at the syllabus on Schoology and going over that with your student. And um, my contact info is also on Schoology, so students should be able to find it. And here's my email. This is the best way to get in contact with me. I welcome emails from parents um, if it is uh, about something that you would rather not discuss in front of your child or if there's some sensitive information you'd like me to know about. But in sixth grade, we are expecting students to start taking that step of if they're just wondering what their grade is, when they can expect, um, you know, to have a class party or, you know, just a sort of an everyday question, uh, they should be using their FCPS email to email me. And um, that's something that we will go over in class when I get back about what I expect. Um, but it's also something you can help them with. And it takes a little bit off your plate once they get good at it. So how can you support your child at home? Well, around the dinner table or when you're in the car, you can ask, what are you learning about in class? What surprised you? What did you learn that you didn't already know about U.S. history? And if you're thinking about assignments and supporting with um, assignments, you can ask, what assignments do you have to do? When do you need to complete them? Take me through your Schoology. Really put the student in the driver's seat and say, hey, I just want to know what's going on. Why don't you show me and really put the ownership on the student? Supplies. Um, so this year we are back fully in person. So it will be a mix of technology and paper and pencil. So I would make sure that your student has pens and pencils and their middle school agenda, which they should be given um, within the first two weeks of school. Um, but if they like to keep track of things in an electronic format, that's fine too. I recommend a binder with loose leaf paper or a notebook, especially if your child likes to write things down and is really burnt out on screens, but it's not necessary if, again, your child is more tech um, savvy and likes to keep track of things online. Just an idea. And your FCPS on computer, which they will be getting in the second week of school. We're looking forward to a great year and I'm looking forward to meeting your son or daughter on September 27th. In the meantime, if you would like to get into contact with my long-term sub, Mr. Mason, you can email him at jlmason at fcps.edu. He will be with me until the 29th. We'll have a few days of crossover and he can help answer day-to-day -day questions um, in the meantime. Thank you so much. And I look forward to um, being with your student in just a few weeks. Hello and
Bye-bye.